okay good morning students welcome to today's lecture so in our last lecture we had started with the next property of fluid that is viscosity of the fluid okay so we had seen what is viscosity viscosity is nothing but it is a property of the fluid of its own by virtue of which it offers resistance to deformation under the action of shear stress okay so we had seen the case of flow of any solid body or uh, flow of wall uh, through water and through honey okay we had seen that video and what we had observed water was flowing more easily okay in water than honey okay in the honey it was flowing very slowly so why this is happening this is happening because there is some property within the honey and water okay in honey it is resisting more so basically uh, ball was flowing slowly and in case of water the resist, uh, resistance offered was least okay so ball was able to flow more quickly so this difference or this property by virtue of which there, uh, there is a different type of flow in honey and water so that property is nothing but nothing but viscosity of the fluid okay so last time uh, we had seen uh, this definition okay so resistance to deformation and when this resistance will offer under the action of shear stress that property is nothing but viscosity of the given fluid then we had seen what is the relationship between the shear stress applied to the body and the rate of shear strain or velocity gradient induced in the body okay and the law which states this relation is nothing but newton's law of viscosity so that law states the shear stress is directly proportional to rate of shear strain or velocity gradient okay so we had uh, seen in our last lecture that we are we will consider two parallel plates and consider imaginary uh, mass of fluid in uh, within this two plate one plate is flowing while other plate is stationary okay so with layer by layer there is a continuous change in velocity so we had seen the velocity profile in last lecture and we had observed that the shear stress applied tau is directly proportional to du by dy which is velocity gradient in order to remove this proportionality we had introduced another constant that is called as mu so mu is nothing but it is called as coefficient of dynamic viscosity or simply dynamic viscosity okay and du by dy represent the rate of shear strain or velocity gradient okay so all this we had seen in our last lecture after that we had defined the unit the unit for viscosity is newton second per meter square in case of si system it is dyne uh, centimeter per uh, sorry dyne second per centimeter square in case of cgs system and we had also seen one industrial unit for viscosity that is called as poise so remember one poise equals to one dyne centimeter per centimeter square or one poise equals to one by 10 newton second per meter square or 1 newton second per meter square equals to 10 poise okay remember this conversion for solving the problem after that we had uh, seen the derivation for dimension the so dimension of viscosity is m to the power 1 l to the power minus 1 t to the power minus 1 its derivation we had seen <coughs> okay after that we had seen what is the effect of temperature on viscosity of the fluid so in case of liquid the viscosity decreases with increase in temperature while in case of gases the viscosity increases with increase in temp temperature okay what is the reason we had already discussed in our last lecture okay so today we are going to start with our next topic that is classification of the fluid based on viscosity of the given fluid okay so based on this property which is viscosity or this law newton's law of viscosity the fluid are further classified as newtonian fluid and non newtonian fluid okay so we we are going to understand this uh, classification with the help of this graph okay so newtonian fluid as the name suggest okay so any fluid which follows newton law of viscosity that is called as newtonian fluid okay now it is human nature also that whenever some law is prepared there will be some people which are going to follow the law and there will be some people which are going always going to break the law okay so similar similar thing happens with the fluid okay there are some fluid which follows newton's law of viscosity 
and there are some uh, people which which always or which does not obey newton's law of viscosity so the fluid which obeys newton's law of viscosity for this fluid shear stress is directly proportional to velocity gradient du by dy okay or tau equals to mu du by dy okay so such type of fluid are called as newtonian fluid so the what is the definition the definition is the fluid which obeys newton law, law of viscosity and for which shear stress is directly proportional to velocity gradient this fluid are called as newtonian fluid okay so for newtonian fluid tau equals to mu du by dy okay as per newton's law of viscosity and as the name suggests uh, as as the definition suggests here shear stress is directly proportional to velocity gradient du by dy okay so if you are going to plot a graph of shear stress tau taken uh, along y axis and rate of shear strain or velocity gradient du by dy taken along x axis okay so in this case it is a direct proportional relation so it will be a straight line making an angle of 45 degree with both x and y axis okay so slope of this line du by dy equals to sorry the slope of this line m equals to 1 dy by dx that equals to 1 okay so this type of fluid they are called as newtonian fluid so on the graph they are represented by a straight line making an angle of 45 degree as you can see in this graph such type of fluid are called as newtonian fluid so what are the examples of newtonian fluid so all uh, the uh, means uh, <coughs> the fluids such as glycerin kerosene diesel petrol air water alcohol okay which you are using commonly uh, in day to day life all these fluid are nothing but newtonian fluids okay after that the next definition will be or the next classification will be non newtonian fluid make one correction here it is here too okay so the next type of fluid is non newtonian fluid so as per the definition or as the name suggests non newtonian so these are the fluid which does not obey newton's law of viscosity okay so the fluid which does not obey newton's law of viscosity and for them the shear stress is not directly proportional to the velocity gradient du by dy so such type of fluid are called as non newtonian fluid so for non newtonian fluid this newton law of viscosity is modified to tau is directly proportional to du by dy to the power n okay here the newton's law is modified further so for them tau is directly proportional to velocity gradient to the power n where this n is called as viscosity index okay this n is called as viscosity one minute viscosity index so such type of fluid for which the newton's law of viscosity is not modified and for them tau is equal to du by dy to the power n or tau is equal to mu times du by dy to the power n so such type of fluids are called as non newtonian fluid okay so this non newtonian fluid are further subclassified into two types now here there are two chances or there are two cases in first case this value of n see or uh, there will be three cases the value of n is less than 1 the value of n is greater than 1 or the value of n is equal to 1 so when the value of n is equal to 1 so basically tau equals to mu du by dy to the power 1 so it will become newtonian fluid the so newtonian fluid are the fluid for which the viscosity index n is equal to 1 okay but in non newtonian fluid the value of viscosity index n is either less than 1 or <coughs> the value of n is greater than 1 so the fluid for which the value of n is less than 1 so that type of fluid are called as dilatant fluid and the fluid for which the value of n is greater than 1 so that type of fluid are called as pseudo plastic fluids okay so for the non newtonian fluid tau equals to mu du by dy to the power n okay uh, this is a mathematical relation between shear stress and velocity gradient so if n is less than 1 okay 
the viscosity index n is less than 1 so the fluid is dilatant fluid so example of dilatant fluid are the butter which we are using in day to day life all the starch the sugar solution and etc okay all these are the dilatant fluids then next is pseudo plastic fluid so as we had discussed if the vis viscosity index n is greater than 1 and the fluid is non newtonian fluid so the uh, type of fluid is pseudo plastic fluid and the example of pseudo uh, plastic fluid are the mud uh, slurries okay then polymer solution blood milk paper pulp gums okay all these are the example of pseudo plastic fluids okay so if n equals to 1 the fluid is newtonian fluid and if n is less than 1 so it is dilatant fluid and if n greater than 1 so the type of fluid is pseudo plastic fluid then the uh, next <coughs> definition or next type of uh, fluid which we are going to see so that fluid is ideal plastic fluid or it is also called as bingham's fluid okay now consider the example of toothpaste okay have you seen the toothpaste the toothpaste seems to be semi solid okay but how you take the toothpaste out of the uh, uh, paste uh, toothpaste uh, body you apply the shear stress and when you apply the shear stress so that toothpaste starts to flow and it come out uh, you take that on your toothbrush okay so there are some fluid example your shaving cream or your uh, day to day creams which you are using okay all the pharmaceutical creams so they seems to be semi solid but if you apply the shear stress this starts to flow okay so there are some fluid existing uh, in our day to day life which seems to be solid or semi solid at uh, normal uh, temperature or uh, at a <clears throat> normal condition but if you apply the shear stress this starts to flow okay that type of fluid which are, uh, seems to be plastic but on application of shear stress this starts to flow so that type of fluid are called as ideal plastic fluid uh, or bingham fluid okay so again in this type there are two cases whether they follow newton's law of viscosity or they does not follow newton's law of viscosity so the type of fluid which seems to be semi solid but on application of shear stress this starts to flow and they follow newton's law of viscosity so that type of fluid are called as ideal plastic fluid or bingham plastic fluid okay so for them the newton's law of viscosity is modified to tau equals to tau yield okay tau yield plus mu du by dy okay so this much magnitude it will represent the tau yield okay and what is this yield shear stress tau yield so yield shear stress is nothing but it is the amount of stress which is requ uh, required to be applied so that the solid will be converted into fluid okay that means aapne aapka jo toothpaste hai ya fir koi bhi aapka cream hai us pe aap jo stress apply kar rahe ho if that value of stress is less than tau yield so it will not flow okay so if you apply the yield stress so at this yield stress they will start to flow but when they are flowing they will obey newton's law of viscosity and from the for them mu equals to du by d by okay that type of fluid is called as ideal plastic or bingham fluid so for them the total shear stress tau it is nothing but the sum of yield stress tau yield plus mu du by d by okay and the example of <coughs> this ideal plastic or bingham plastic fluid are the toothpaste oil paints jellies sewage sludge etc okay all these are the example of ideal plastic or bingham plastic fluid then next is pseudo plastic or thixotropic fluid okay sorry uh, the next is thixotropic fluid okay so if again uh, sorry one minute okay if again there are some uh, fluids or semi solids existing in nature okay which seems to be semi solid at uh, room temperature but if you apply the shear stress they will start to flow but they will not follow the newton's law of viscosity okay so that type of fluid are called as thixotropic fluid okay so this thixotropic fluid now uh, the mathematical relation is modified so tau equals to tau yield again tau yield is the amount of stress which will 
required to be applied so that the fluid will start to flow. But after that, when it is flowing, it is not obeying the Newton's law of viscosity. So <coughs> tau equals to tau yield plus mu du by dy to the power n. Okay. Remember, in case of uh, thixotropic fluid, the n is always greater than one. There is no fluid found whose n is less than one. Okay. So all the fluid, thixotropic fluid has n greater than one. So that thixotropic fluid are shown here. Okay. So this n is greater than one. And here n equals to one. So these are ideal plastic or being amped plastic fluid, and these are thixotropic fluid. So example of thixotropic fluid are uh, the lipstick, then printer ink. Okay, these are the well-known example of thixotropic fluid. Okay. After that, rheology. Now, basically, uh, uh, now you had known the classification of. <coughs> our fluid mechanics or the classification of fluid based on Newton's law of viscosity. So simply they are classified as Newtonian fluid and non-Newtonian fluid. Now the study of Newtonian fluid, they are a little bit different. And the study of non-Newtonian fluid, it is uh, again a little bit different because their properties vary uh, considerably. Okay. So the study of Newtonian fluid that we are going to cover in fluid mechanics. Okay. While the study of non-Newtonian fluid. So there is a separate branch or there is a separate subject in which the study of non-Newtonian fluid is considered and that branch is nothing but rheology. Okay. So the rheology is nothing but it compromise of two words, rheo and logi. So rheo is nothing but it is a science of flow. Okay. Or science of fluid flow. And log logi, it comes from the word logos, which means science. Okay. So rheology is nothing but it is a study of the science that will that, that deals with the flow of liquids. Okay. Why we are not taking gases because in thermodynamics the gas laws are considered. Okay. And non-Newtonian fluid are not gases. Non-Newtonian fluids are basically liquids. But it is a study of, uh, of the science that deals with the flow of liquids and their deformation of the matter under stresses. Okay. Now, basically, this uh, rheology or the subject of rheology basically deals with pharmacy field because there are a number of gels, creams, ointment, paste, okay, toothpaste, uh, and so on. Okay, so these are these are the products which are dealing with pharmaceutical industries. So rheology or the behavior of this cream. Okay, are you going to buy a cream uh, or are you going to buy a toothpaste? Uh, so that आपने जैसे toothpaste को open किया वो solid हो जाए या फिर आप ऐसा cream use करोंगे कि जो cream आप हाथ में लो और वो solid हो जाए वो flowy ना हो okay so basically rheology का study जो होता है वो pharmaceutical application में use किया जाता है uh, that deals with how that cream will going to behave when the customer is going to use that okay so rheology is that science okay so आपके syllabus में rheology नहीं है we are going to deal with only Newtonian fluids, but rheology ke upar, abhi nahi syllabus mein just uh, introduction to rheology aapko syllabus mein diya hai. So you should know what is rheology. Okay. Upar aaya ek short note aa sakta hai. Or three to four marks. What is rheology? So just remember rheology, it is nothing but the science which deals with the study of flow of liquid, basically non-Newtonian fluids and the deformation uh, under the different stresses condition. Okay. Uh, uh, in this way, we had covered uh, or we had seen the most important property of fluid that is viscosity or simply dynamic viscosity. After that, the next type of viscosity which we are going to see that is called as kinematic viscosity. So this kinematic viscosity, it is simply defined as the ratio of absolute viscosity mu of the fluid to its mass density rho. Okay. The ratio of absolute viscosity to mass density of the fluid is called as kinematic viscosity of that particular fluid. It is denoted by the Greek symbol nu. Okay, remember how to draw this nu. Nu is nothing but it is similar to V, but you are supposed to give some uh, uh, inclination like this. Okay, so this is a symbol nu. Okay, and uh, this symbol nu is used to denote the kinematic viscosity of the given fluid. 
So as the name suggests, or as the definition suggests, this nu kinetic viscosity, it is the ratio of absolute viscosity mu to the density rho. So nu equals to mu by rho. Okay. So the <coughs> unit of kinetic viscosity. We are going to see the derivation. How we are, we will derive its unit. Now we know mu is a, it is a ratio of absolute viscosity to mass density. So unit will be the ratio of unit of mu to unit of rho. Now what is the unit of mu? Uh, uh, Newton second per meter square. So it is force unit of force into unit of time upon length square. And unit of mass density is mass per kg. Oh, sorry, mass per uh, sorry kg per meter cube. So it is mass upon length cube. So this square will cancel with this cube. Okay, and this length will go in numerator. Okay, so it will be simply force into time upon mass uh, per unit length. Okay, so again you can simplify. Now what is force? We know as per Newton's second law, force is nothing but mass into acceleration so it is mass into acceleration per unit of time meter per second square so it is length upon time square okay into time divided by mass upon length so you have a mass mass will cancel this length will go in numerator so it will become length square and this time square will cancel with this time okay so simply we will have length square upon time okay so the unit uh, for uh, in SI system for kinematic viscosity is length square, so meter square per time. Okay, so it is uh, meter square per second. Okay, so the unit of kinematic viscosity in SI system is meter square per second. In CGS system, the unit is centimeter square per second. Again, in addition to these two, there are some industrial unit. One of the industrial unit which is most probably used is stroke so remember the relation one stroke equals to one centimeter square per second now what is the conversion between meter and second sorry uh, centimeter and meter so one meter equals to one uh, sorry hundred centimeter okay so one meter square is equal to 10 to the power four centimeter square okay so what will be one centimeter square it will be 10 to the power minus 4 meter square. 10 to the power minus 4 meter square. So 1 centimeter square per second is nothing but 10 to the power minus 4 meter square per second. Okay. So 1 stroke, which is 1 centimeter square per second, is also equals to 10 to the power minus 4 meter square per second. Remember this conversion because of the problem. Mein, while solving the problem, the kinematic viscosity can be given in stroke and they will ask, uh, you are supposed to solve the problem. So first of all, convert that kinematic viscosity in stroke, okay, into kinematic viscosity in meter square per second. So the relation is one stroke equals to 10 power minus 4 meter square per second. Okay, remember this conversion from problem uh, solving point of view. The next is dimension. Now we know dimension of kinematic viscosity nu, it will be the ratio of dimension of absolute viscosity mu to the dimension of mass density rho. Now we know the dimension of absolute viscosity is m to the power 1, l to the power minus 1, t to the power minus 1, divided by uh, dimension of mass density rho is m1 l minus 3. Okay, here is minus sign. Maybe you can see it. So it is m1 l minus 3 t0. Okay, now how to solve this? When uh, you will take this denominator term in numerator, so it will become m to the power plus one minus one. Okay, this plus one and this will go in numerator, so minus one. Then l to the power minus one, then this minus three will become plus three. Okay, and here t to the power minus one minus zero. Okay, this zero will go in numerator, so it will become minus zero. Okay, so we will have this plus one minus one will cancel. So we will have m to the power zero. This minus one plus three, we will have plus two and t to the power minus one. The dimension is m zero l two t minus one. Okay, remember the dimensions are m zero l two t minus one 
for kinematic viscosity of the given fluid okay so any doubt about this property kinematic viscosity any doubt related to this okay now we will solve the numerical based on viscosity of the given okay so a plate 0.025 mm distant or distant from a fixed plate moves at 60 cm per second moves at 60 cm per second and require a force of 2 newton per unit area that is 2 newton per meter square to maintain this speed determine the fluid viscosity determine the fluid viscosity between so what is given in this problem there is a plate okay one minute okay so in this problem there is one plate this is plate one now this plate one is uh, at a distance of 0.025 mm okay from another plate or fixed plate this is another plate and the distance between them okay this distance between them we will call this distance as let like this distance is dy okay so this dy is 0.025 mm okay this lower plate is stationary it is a fixed plate so its velocity u equals to 0 while the up, uh, upper plate is moving okay this upper plate it is moving with a velocity of 60 cm per second okay so its u is 60 cm per second now convert this cm per second into meter per second so divide by 100 so it is 0.6 meter per second okay or uh, and to move this plate with 0 point meter per second you are going to apply some force here okay so that force per unit area okay so that force per unit area is nothing but tau so tau is given to you as 2 newton per meter square okay so on this upper plate we are applying the shear stress and that magnitude of that shear stress is 2 newton per meter square okay so basically we are supposed to determine the absolute viscosity mu for the fluid which is filled in between these two plate okay so we can apply this newton's law of viscosity so we had just seen this dy is 0.025 u is 60 cm per second okay so you can convert it in meter per second u equals to 0.6 meter per second okay and uh, force or this force area that means shear stress is given okay so the value this is the value of shear stress okay newton per meter square 2 newton per meter square so there is only unknown viscosity mu so apply uh, the newton's law of viscosity so we know mathematically it is tau equals to mu du by dy okay now here the value of tau is 2 newton per meter square dy which is a distance between two plate it is 0.025 mm so in here it will be 0.025 into 10 power minus 3 meter and change in velocity so change in velocity is nothing but difference of velocity difference of velocity between two plates so on upper plate it is u on lower plate it is 0 so change in velocity du is u minus 0 or simply u which is 0.6 meter per second so put this values so you can solve this okay so put the values so 2 equals to mu into 0.6 divided by 0.025 into 10 to the minus 3 so mu will become 2 into 0.025 into 10 to the minus 3 you are uh, multiplying this term then divide this term by 0.6 so the value of mu comes out to be 8.33 into 10 to the minus 5 Okay, it will be newton second per meter square. Okay, but sometimes uh, in problem they will ask that uh, find the value in poise or find the absolute viscosity between the plate in poise. So we know the conversion one newton second per meter square one newton second per meter square equals to ten poise. So um, newton second per meter square. Okay. यहाँ पे पॉइस का वैल्यू पुट कर देंगे टेन पॉइस सो इट विल बी एट पॉइंट थ्री थ्री 
into 10 power minus 4 points. So today we will stop here. Okay. In next lecture, we are going to solve some more problems on Newton's law of viscosity.